On December 13, 1974, 4449 was towed out of Oaks Park for her brand new life. She was subsequently taken to the Burlington Northern Hoyt Street Roundhouse in Portland. For the next three and a half months, the locomotive was inspected and rebuilt by Ross Rowland and his team. The engine would have to be more thoroughly prepared than the Reading engine had been. The daylight was planned to pull the train continuously for over 11 months, with little time for servicing along the route, even if facilities could be found. After many months of work by Ross Rowland and his team, Southern Pacific 4449 was fully restored and ready for operation in a brand new red, white, and blue scheme to match the consist of the American Freedom Train. Since the original whistle had been taken off of the engine, two new replacements were brought in and fitted to the engine. A Hancock 3 chime from SP and S 700 and a Southern Pacific 6 chime. Thankfully, the engine's air horn was not stolen. But before she could head to Chicago, she needed to perform some tests. To make sure that she was in great order to haul the American Freedom Train for over 11,000 miles, she needed to haul the weight needed for the train. Freight cars equal to the weight of the American Freedom Train were lashed to the back of the locomotive and she performed tests near Wishram, Washington over the mountains and valleys. After many months of tests, 4449 was deemed a great fit and ready for the American Freedom Train. The day before her journey would start, she headed to Swan Island near Portland, Oregon as a public display for the day as Reading T1 number 2101 continued the American Freedom Train in the east. 4449 then headed to Chicago, making stops in Sacramento and Ogden, Utah for overnight servicing. But shenanigans were in store for the engine. Near Dorchester, Nebraska on June 30th, 1975, a dump truck backed up near a construction site onto the train tracks. The driver tried to get out of the way, but the engine clipped the back of the truck. Nobody was hurt, but 4449 needed a new metal skirt to replace the chip section. As such, 4449 went to GM's plant in LaGrange, Illinois for the replacement. Finally, the engine arrived in Chicago on July 27th. That day, she met up with the other restored steamer, Reading T1 number 2101. The T1 swapped the Freedom Train after taking it all across the eastern states. 2101 also went into Chicago needing repairs after being restored a mere 30 days when Roland bought the engine earlier that year from a scrapyard. 4449 took the train to Crystal Lake, Illinois and went all over the western United States.
On September 23, 1975, the engine went in for repairs at the Union Pacific Railroad's Omaha, Nebraska shops to fix the drivers. This caused the engine to miss dates in Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana with Burlington Northern diesels used for the dates. After that, 4449 took off for the Pacific Northwest. After the AFT headed for Seattle and then south toward Oregon and California, the 4449 swapped the Freedom Train in Austin, Texas for Texas and Pacific No. 610, another steamer restored for the event. 610 was restored by a good friend of Roland, David Pearson. 4449 headed to the Southern Railway shops in Irondale, Alabama before getting the train back from Texas and Pacific 610 in Dallas. 4449 then took the train across Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Tennessee, Louisiana, and Alabama. She swapped the train again in Birmingham as 2101 took the train. By late summer of 1976, the majority of the hype for the American Freedom Train was burning out, but the show had to go on as the 4449 was about to finish in the eastern United States. 4449 and 2101 swapped the train for the last time in Washington, D.C. as 4449 took the train through Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and finally Florida. On December 31st, 1976, 4449 made her last stop in Miami, Florida. A closing ceremony was held with 3 million attending and a party all night vibe to the final night of the American Freedom Train. By the morning of 1977, the end came and went and the AFT was complete. The 4449 was then placed into storage in Miami. All the artifacts on the train were taken back to Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. The passenger cars were later sold to Canada for their discovery train that year. The 4449 sat in a shed in Miami for only a few weeks until she took on a new job. Amtrak Formed on May 1st, 1971, Created a special train called the Amtrak Transcontinental Steam Excursion, with 4449 being the main locomotive to haul the train from Miami along the Sunset Route and up to Portland, Oregon to her home. The original plan was to take the train north towards Colorado, Utah, and Nevada, but the opportunity to go along the California coast with more people attending proved too much to pass on. As such, the route went all along the same sunset route and turned north toward Los Angeles and up along the coast before going inland in the Sacramento River Valley and Mount Shasta through the Cascades before ending in Portland. The event was a spin-off to the American Freedom Train to promote the railroad, but also to get 4439 back to Portland, Oregon, as she was due to for repairs after traveling across the United States for two years. Shortly after, 4449 was steamed up once again in Miami and took charge of the journey from Miami on January 14, 1977. Nine thousand seven hundred people bought tickets to ride behind 4449. She left Miami and went to Sanford, Thomasville, Georgia, and Birmingham, Alabama, where 4439 spent the winter in the Southern Railway shops in Irondale, Alabama, outside of Birmingham. The train then continued along the sunset route of Jackson, Mississippi, and New Orleans, Louisiana.
For the rest of 1977, the engine ran along the southwest, making stops in New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, and Southern California before heading north toward Sacramento and Redding, stopping in San Luis Obispo, Oakland, Dunsmere, and Eugene. Finally, on May 1st, 1977, 4449 ended her journey in Portland, Oregon, two years after leaving for the American Freedom Train. After the engine sat at Portland Union Station overnight, the locomotive did not go back to the Hoyt Street Roundhouse. Instead, Brooklyn Roundhouse, owned by the Southern Pacific Railroad, was used to store the 4449. The railroad leased the roundhouse to the now-formed Friends of 4449. The engine and the group had a temporary but long-term home. 4449 was due for some major repairs because of the mileage that she had accumulated over the U.S. from 1975 to 1977. For the rest of the 1970s, 4449 was dormant. However, in 1981, 4449 awoke from her slumber and she was fired up for a very special event. The California State Railroad Museum in Old Sacramento was fully constructed after years of planning and proposals to the state. Several steam locomotives were slated to come for the opening of this brand new museum in Old Sacramento. These locomotives included Southern Pacific 1269, Union Pacific 8444 and 3985, Dardanelle and Russellville No. 8, and 4449. During her time at the Brooklyn Roundhouse, she was returned to her original daylight livery with a new change. The engine now had big Southern Pacific lettering on the tender of the locomotive. She originally had this paint job after she was repainted sometime in the 1940s. Another change was that the Southern Pacific 6 tri mounted on the locomotive earlier became the permanent and only whistle on the locomotive. The Hancock 3 chime was returned to SP and S700. 4449 was fired up in Portland and went down to Sacramento for the opening of the California State Railroad Museum. From May 2nd to May 10th, the party rang loud and clear with thousands traveling to Sacramento for the celebration. On May 11th, all engines steamed back to Nevada for Dardanelle and Russellville No. 8, Wyoming for 8444 and 3985, and Oregon for 4449.
after that, 4449 returned to the Brooklyn Roundhouse and underwent some maintenance. However, in 1984, 4449 would travel along familiar rails. The New Orleans World's Fair was being held, with UP 8444 and 4449 asked to take part in the fair. 8444 came from Cheyenne down south and 4449 followed the Cascades route in Northern California and Southern Oregon down through Sacramento inland to Fresno and Bakersfield before turning in Southern California and heading on the Sunset route through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Louisiana. Arriving in May, breaking the world record for the longest passenger steam excursion in the history of the United States. The locomotive stayed in New Orleans next to the NASA Space Shuttle Enterprise and the monorail ride, and she was also open to the public. After only a week arriving in New Orleans, the locomotive headed across the Mississippi River for the second time to Portland. 8444 would stay throughout the whole fair, returning home in December of that year. Years later, in 1986, preparations were being made to the 4449. This was in anticipation for her first time on the big screen. In March, the Disney Studios in Los Angeles reached an agreement with the city of Portland to use the daylight in a major motion picture. This required servicing the engine and preparing a special train for a trip to Hollywood. Walt Disney was filming Tough Guys featuring Kirk Douglas and Burt Lancaster. The premise of the movie is about two criminals who want to rob the same train that they tried last time and got 30 years in jail. The two were getting old and they wanted to try one more time and escape to Mexico in the process. The 4449 was the lucky engine to be picked in the movie and the train in the movie was christened as the Gold Coast Flyer, run in the movie by the Southern Pacific Railroad. What's that? Souvenir. The 4449 was chosen for the effect of luxury. Disney had previously looked at Union Pacific 8444 to run the train with a matching set of Union Pacific passenger cars. Unfortunately, the logistics of trying to get 8444 from Cheyenne to Los Angeles proved a little too hard. Eventually, Disney found 4449 and chose the locomotive to be in the movie. The locomotive traveled from Portland to Los Angeles and filming commenced. Most of the scenes with 4449 were filmed on the Kaiser Steel Ore Rail Line called the Eagle Mountain Railroad that almost ran to Mexico. From March 31st to April 11th, the locomotive was filmed in Los Angeles, El Monte, and Taylor Yard. She was first filmed in Taylor Yard. Oh, oh, oh. Piece of cake. 
week. What's the trouble, officer? Your train's being robbed. You're crazy. Nobody robs trains anymore. I'd say you've been misinformed. At the end, she was filmed for the iconic chase scene at the Eagle Mountain Railroad. Doyle McCormick was a character on set, acting as the engineer for the Gold Coast Flyer. He also helped with 4449's restoration back in 1974 and 1975. After filming, 4449 left SoCal and went north to Portland. After returning home from Portland, the locomotive did a number of small excursions but never went on a big mainline run. However, in 1989, she headed back to SoCal for the second time for a big celebration. Los Angeles Union Station near downtown Los Angeles was turning 50 years old serving the Union Pacific, Southern Pacific, and Santa Fe when they previously operated their passenger trains at that same station. UP 8444 and 4449 were invited to celebrate the occasion. The locomotives also participated in a once-in-a-lifetime event. They raced along El Cajon Pass on parallel tracks. The two engines departed Los Angeles and raced along the mountain crest. 8444 was on the lower track while 4449 had a smaller train but a much steeper grade at 2.5 to 3%.
8444 had the edge for most of the race until 4449 had a hot box and was forced to stop and continue at a much slower pace. The whole event was captured on video and was one of 4449's most memorable moments. After the event in mid-May, the locomotive went back to Portland and a new decade began.